Bomberman Fantasy Race is what happens when you have a franchise that's willing to capitalize on everything and everyone without a clear vision of why it should exist. Welcome to the quest for the worst, the series where I pick a game with a below average score and suffer through it to understand what happened, and most importantly, for your entertainment. Drop a like if you want me to continue the series, subscribe for more content like this, and comment on which game you would like to see me play next. Bomberman Fantasy Race is a kart racing game that was developed to take advantage of the kart racing craze. To cut the chase, the game couldn't compete, and the once charming characters of Bomberman became nothing but a loud goon squad that's set to make you fail. The visual presentation of the game is good, characters are nice to look at, tracks are graphically diverse and visually appealing. Adding to that, the mounts have a small portrait that will display the current stamina. It can range from OK to going hard and outright sussy. The music, in my opinion, is the best part of the game. Just listen to this. The mechanics are pretty simple. You run with X and steer with the D-pad. If you press up, your mount will sprint, depleting the stamina bar. The mechanics themselves are straightforward, so what makes this game so hard? Steering, unfortunately, there is no traction. Mounts feel like they have butter shoes and are trying to race on ice. That paired up with the insane speeds you can achieve that will send you flying to walls, pits and obstacles. Let's talk about items. Bombs have several differences, unfortunately these distinctions are barely noticeable and at most will be just a small inconvenience. We also have eggs, which depending on the mount you choose it will give different abilities. For Luis is a small speed increase, for Terras is a shield that protects you from bombs. Additionally, you can buy items in the store, however the impact of these items have on making you win is negligible. There is one item that reigns supreme, the stopwatch, which I'll explain later. Besides items, you can also get negative statuses from boxes, from being unable to throw bombs to reverse controllers, even public defecation makes an appearance. I will give this to the game. Whenever I was first, I dreaded the result from boxes. It was enough to make me avoid them altogether. It felt more like a horror game than a racing one. The computer can range from idiotic to outright mugging someone in broad daylight ridiculous. In the first tracks, it's nothing to fear over. They can be a bit dumb, while it does remove all the challenge, it's inconsistent throughout the game. At later stages, it's way too much, I call them the goon squad, and they have already decided that you are the target. Their formation consists of three goons that at the start of the game will focus on you. They will sometimes pretend they're against each other, but don't let that fool you. The fourth goon, or PC number 5, activated goat mode. By the end, he will ignore physics and the laws of nature, going from 0 to 100, skipping everything in between. Taking curves at max speed, invulnerability shields at the start of the game, you name it, he has it. You can make the argument that if you're good, you will win regardless. And while that is true, it's only partially true. I'll explain this later as well. Money or gold in this game is very important. You unlock tracks by buying tickets. The price for the tickets is higher than the reward from the race, so most of the time you won't make your money back. The bonus stage helps, but still expect heavy grinding. Not only that, paired to the stable where you can buy mounts ranging from 1000 to 10,000 and eventually with the special mounts, the Black Louie and the King Terra going for 100k and 150k respectively. The bank is a glorified piggy bank where you can see your gold. Neat idea, but lackluster execution. Tutorial time. To make easy money in the game, wait until you have around 5000 gold and then go to options. Memory card 2 and save. Now go to versus mode and race yourself in the easiest track with the highest bet possible. Repeat until rich. We have Bumper Circuit, which is the basic one-size-fits-all track that we've seen in all kart racers. That doesn't make it bad, it is supposed to be easy, allowing you to get a hold of the controllers and figure out the mechanics. 
Coaster Lake is my personal favorite. It has a little bit of everything, a few sharp turns, jumps and bounce boosts, some clever shortcuts and a nice visual theme. Once you win the race, you get to play the bonus stage, which is basically picking up coins as fast as you can. This is valid for every single stage, by the way. Waka Beachside, unfortunately, is very bland and generic. The Bomberman theme is nowhere to be seen unless you count the bomb palms, while the beach looks wide, it's strangely thin, and the shortcut is hard to pull off. Once you figure it out, the execution needs to be perfect, or you will fall out the stage. Best case scenario, you'll smash your face in. Ski Course is the worst track made, and I bet it's where most people will quit the game. This track is a horrid, disgusting mistake that shouldn't exist. First, actual ice level with butter shoes. Yeah, terrible steering. Second, a jump that if fail will have you redo all of the loop. Did I say one? My bad, there are two. After that, two bounce boosts in succession that are hard to pull off, even after a while. The worst track by far, but not the worst experience. We have more suffering to do here. Star Express is good. A few weird turns here and there, but overall pretty solid. The alien is easy to avoid and the laser section is engaging without being punishing. Dyna Mountain is where the experience starts to worsen. As you start, you have two options, being behind the computer and get bombed out or try your luck through the bomb field. After that, we have a shortcut that is easier than the actual path. Just make sure to jump by the end. Later, we have a pit that is an unintended shortcut. The water is supposed to slow you down, but it's not enough to reduce a sizable advantage from it. And well, some sharp turns that make your camera go crazy. Well, we made it, finally, the last level, Bomber Castle. Running this track for the first time will be frustrating, painful, and sad. Sharp turns everywhere which makes bouncing from wall to wall an actual viable strategy. Wall boosts that need pinpoint accuracy to get, otherwise you fall to the void. Bomb explosions, bomb minefields, and a computer that is relentless. They will bring you down, no matter what. PC number 5 activates model load to get the 100k gold mount, doesn't need to break, and goes full speed. So how do you win? It took a lot of practicing, timing out the bounce boost, and most importantly, luck. The stopwatch for many will be the only way to win. I got two out of the boxes petrifying everybody for five seconds each. It doesn't matter how good you are, if you're not perfect, you're not winning without it. By the end, you unlock the mirror matches which are the same courses we have already played with the cheating difficulty of the last stage. To that I say, I'm good, thank you. By everything I've said, you would think I hate this game. The truth is, I don't. I played it a lot as a kid trying to beat the last race, leading me to spend hours farming for gold to get the best mount. Bomberman Fantasy Race is not a bad game. It's a game played with bad decisions and lazy designs. The movement is not that bad, but the constant sharp turns are frustrating. The stages are thematically pleasing, but the constant roadblocks you have to go through to get them diminish the appreciation for these levels. Unfortunately, when you're done beating the game, you will feel like it was luck and not your own skill. Thank you very much for watching, please hit that like button if you play Bomberman Fantasy Race in your childhood, subscribe to get notified about my future content, if you disagree with any of my points, please leave it as a comment, I'd love to see what you have to say. Until the next one, I sign out.